This program is brought to you by the City of Fountains Coaches Association. Carlos Nelson with Cascade Sports. Uh, Today uh, we have um, another one of our HBCU coaches. Who do we have here? It's Mike Riley from the University of the District of Columbia. Hey, Hey, Mike. Uh, also, we have uh, the athletic director of uh, Lincoln Prep and uh, the head basketball coach of uh, Lincoln Prep and the director of operations for the City of Fountain Coaches Association. This man wears about 5,000 hats. Uh, so, uh, Coach, why don't you uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself uh, and mention some of the people that have helped you build your skill set to land where you're at now. Okay. Uh, Thanks for having me first. And um, when I grew up, I grew up in Washington, D.C. And when I grew up, it was at a time that basketball was the king. And actually basketball in college, because there wasn't a whole lot of, um, wasn't ESPN or any of that, it was the games that you used to um, see and hear guys talk about on the playground. The playground was so big. And one of the first things that I noticed about uh, playing on the playground that even the tough guys respected the guys that could play ball. You know, they, they didn't mess with those guys that were ballers. And that was a safe haven for people. You'd come out and you hear those guys talking. And, and I saw they had a different type of respect. You saw they were playing and, you know, guys that were my heroes, Billy Gaskins, Lynn Reed, played at a playground that my mother, um, I was fortunate enough, my mother put me in school. And my first introduction to organized basketball was CYO, which is the Catholic Youth Organizations. And um, through that, a lot of people played, and I wound up playing later against a lot of people in that. But that was my first introduction to basketball as it was. And, and, you know, guys that came from D.C., you go around the playground and you hear them talk about the Austin Cars or, uh, you know, the Dave Bings or uh, Elgin Bellas. I didn't see those guys play, but I saw Austin Carr play, but I didn't hey, see Coach, Dave. I'm going to interrupt yeah. you for a minute. Go ahead. Go Austin ahead. Carr's brother was my roommate in college. Oh, is that right? Right. And uh, I still have contact with Austin uh, with him doing uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, so and, Austin- I lived, hey, and I lived in Laurel, Maryland for a minute and on South Dakota. So I really have a connection. You, to what you, you lived on South Dakota? Yes. Oh, you had to be tough just to live on South Dakota. Hey, listen, bro. From the hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but those guys, you know, we used to go around the playgrounds and we'd watch those guys play. And the playground games, you know, Happy Holler, Rose Park, Luzon, St. Augustine, Stead, all those playground games was how you made your bones. How, when you go about, you know, on Fridays, guys used to pass around two lists. There was a list of parties that was going to be on Friday and Saturday. And the other list was where they were balling at on Saturday. And you would leave the house Saturday morning and you wouldn't come home. Now, I don't even remember eating. I remember we drank, you know, we got somebody got some juice or something like that and we drank. But I don't ever remember eating on Saturday. We played ball all the time. And that's what they talked about. And so from those playground games, you ha- you heard guys talking about coaches. When, when I played CYO ball, I was coached by Mr. Thomas and, Mr. Bradford, who organized, and they were more organizers than probably great coaches. They were great mentors of life in general, but not. it wasn't really until I got um, a guy named Lawrence Bradford that he was a tough coach. And then I understood what coaching was really about and how to play for someone that knew about basketball and things like that. And this was early on, CYO. But I would hear guys talk about coaching and, and, and being coach guys that were my heroes and they kept talking about this guy uh, that was my my high school wound up being my high school coach and they call him cool papa dean and you may be familiar with him 
because of the fact that he wound up leaving my high school, went down to a place that you had a cup of coffee at, uh, Carlos, down to Virginia State. And ah, so, how do you know I was down there at Virginia State? <laughs> well, you know, Carlos, we, we, we're educated coaches. We have to do some homework. We're going to recruit. <laughs> We're going to recruit somebody. We got to do the homework. We got to talk to the cousins and the uncles and things like that. We're not going to have somebody come into my bedroom, living room, and office and not know who they are. So right. I did a little research on you. You had a little cup of coffee down there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Harold Dean, he was, you know, he played for, and when I was uh, younger, I went to his games and saw a lot of my heroes playing for him. And that's really what I got the, the, I guess you would call the coaching bug a little bit. I, I, did, I really, I shouldn't say I got the coaching bug because I really didn't have any real desires to coach at the time. But it was interesting how he could put a team together and how he could formulate a team. And so um, my early, and I want to jump back real quick because when, when we played, we played in this, and it sounds like this country, but everybody would show up around there. There was an alley that was a T in the alley. And in that alley, we played basketball, we played football, and we played baseball. But if you want to go back to a point to where as you're talking about organizing a team and putting together, when you had to choose a team, you wasn't just choosing just, you know, the 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 fastest guys or whatever you're trying to put together. You need a, if you was basketball, you need a rebound. If it was football, you need somebody who's going to block. You know, if it was baseball, you need somebody that could really pitch. So those guys may have not been great in the other sports, but they were great at doing that one thing. And so when you chose or you, you went out and you chose people, you were choosing to win. You had to put together a team. And that was the making of, or, or I guess the beginning of recruiting or, or trying to formulate to become a coach. So that's one of the things I did. I did. But my first coaching opportunity came um, when I was working at my elementary school. Um, my priest that was there, he wound up asking me if I had any desire to coach. And I had, I had not even thought about coach. I had graduated from, from college and everything and hadn't thought about uh, coaching. And he got me the job down at um, – at Gonzaga High School as a JV coach. And that was a great beginning because these were all kids that, you know, JV basketball at Gonzaga wasn't serious. Obviously, it wasn't at a level that whereas you had to win um, in order to stay there. So it was a great opportunity to kind of formulate and put my ideas together. And so Father Kemp got me that um, opportunity there. But I think I got my coaching uh, philosophy, if you want to call it, from my high school coach, Harold Dean, and from my college coach, John Thompson. I think that's where it is. John Thompson probably had the Im uh, biggest impact on me because of longevity. I was with him. I played for him for four years, and then I wind up uh, coaching with him uh, for another, I think, 17 years or so. Should I go on? Good time, coach. <laughs> you played for the, for the big fella. Uh, you know what I mean? I First of all, Coach, thanks for being on, man, and taking time out of your day uh, to, to speak with us. Uh, again, my name's Ryan Glasgow. I'm, I've been a coach uh, in, this, in this area for the last 15, uh, 20 years. Uh, after college, yeah. kind of where my uh, path went and, uh, you know, into athletic administration and things like that. So it's okay. good, to on and good to hear your story and talk some basketball with you. Um, tell us about, you know, your university, um, the level it is. Uh, you know, as high school coaches, we always want to connect with coaches all over the world. Uh, I think more now than ever, this HBCU network is very important uh, based off what we're seeing in the world. Uh, you know, we could talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but tell us about your program. Tell us about, you know, your conference, you know, how you guys have been doing the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, just overall for, for our players that want to get on here and, you know, hear about a, a new school, you know, well, we're in the ECC conference, and um, what's unique about University of District of Columbia being in that conference is that they had never before until we, um, our athletic director, um, Patricia Thomas, um, got us into this conference. Um, most of the schools in New York, we have one school that's in Connecticut and two schools that are upstate uh, New York in, in Rochester and Buffalo. Uh, we're the southernmost team um, here in Washington, D.C. 
Uh, so very competitively, and, and it's Division II. Um, I had never coached at Division II level and really didn't know a whole lot about Division II. I know that um, in this, uh, well, in this area, uh, the only other school that's Division II is, is Bowie State, um, which is, I guess, not too far from where uh, Carlos used to live with over in Laurel. But um, we also, um, which is not too far from here, Virginia Union and I think Virginia State are uh, Division II schools also. So I didn't know a lot about Virginia, uh, Division II schools. What I found out is that they're very competitive. They're far more competitive than I thought they were. You know, it's a lot of kids that we get kids sometimes that border on, uh, and I shouldn't say they 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 are capable of maybe playing Division One, and for one reason or another, uh, they wind up falling in our lap. And so there are several kids probably in our conference could easily play uh, Division One. There's not in in a lot of cases. There's not that much difference between the actual players that I'm talking about guys that are good players between division one and division two, because division one has players that everyone is not a top flight player. Everybody obviously is not going to play in the NBA. And so there's a need for specialists, a defensive specialist, a rebound specialist, someone that can distribute the ball, uh, a great leader. Um, all those guys are not NBA players, but they're good college players. And so their, their team's, uh, that have good players on a team um, that play, that easily play at Division II level, but they could play at Division I level. Um, we're a school that's located in the District of Columbia. We have uh, about 4,000 students. Uh, best thing about the University of District of Columbia is that if you want to go to school and you didn't do well in high school, you could come and be a part of the community college. We have a community college. You can go to the community college for a couple of years, get your associate's degree, and then come and go, go to the flagship four-year school and get your uh, four-year degree. So I think from that standpoint, it's a great opportunity to be in it. And plus, um, the university does not cost as much as other universities in the area. We are a university uh, late in town. We have AU and, uh, I'm sorry, American. We have Georgetown, George Washington. We have Trinity Catholic. Uh, we have Howard. Um, I'm sorry if I missed one, but in all these <laughs> right. in Washington, D.C., they're not, you know, like far away from each other, um, all the college. So it's a lot of colleges around, and, and we are probably the most affordable uh, college. We have a um, we have grad school, obviously, um, and we also have a law school, uh, the David Clark Law School. So um, I think it's an excellent school to go to. Our program, we've been up and down a little bit uh, through the last uh, few years. We've had some good teams this past year. Uh, we didn't do as well as we'd like to have done, but, um, you know, the kids played hard. And um, I always say that if you're going to go to school, go to a place that's going to present a pathway uh, for you to graduate. And our motto at the school is expire, accomplish, and take on, the, take on the world. And the university tries to prepare young men, young women, uh, to go about doing that. And the university gives you opportunity. I think the, the ratio 11 to 1 in the classroom is a great opportunity for them to come and go to school in the nation's capital, um, you know, not – putting any place down, but uh, Washington, D.C. is a lot different than a lot of the places that people wind up either growing up in or going to school in. And they may have been great to go to school there, but the opportunity to raise a family, get a good job, um, may not be there. This place presents all of it. The dichotomy of government and opportunities, I think it's a great place to be, a great place to raise a family. Um, and so I think that the nation's capital brings to the table something that you don't have at other places. I'm not recruiting. It's just true. I've lived here all my yeah, we're life. We're good with your recruiting, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> we're good with your recruiting. But, we got some of the top kids in the nation academically, um, you know, at the school I coach at. So, and then, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of bright kids around here, man. So uh, I think right. it's important, you know, to get 
a lot of kids don't feel like going that far away from home might be a good a good thing. But then that's really what I feel like really teaches you how to become an adult is when you have to go far from home and grow on your own. And mom and dad are not within driving distance. You know, plane flight makes makes you your perspective a lot different. Right. Than right. Tripping the make car. you grow up quick. Right. Right. Exactly. So I mean, being in D.C., you know, uh, you know, we, we're we're really striving to try to build this HBCU network for our student athletes, um, you know, because everything we see that's going on in the world, I'm sure you, uh, you know, you, you've outspoken about that with your kids and, you know, the environment you're in is, is a lot more densely populated than, than where we are. But, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do you feel like um, needs to happen so that more kids will go to, you know, HBCUs to compete? Um, you know, at, at, at every level, whether it be Division One, Division Two, um, whatever. What what are, what is your perspective on that, Coach? Because I know you you know you're in the living room with kids recruiting them. Um, you know, so tell everybody what. what you're well, you know, when when I go into people's houses, I don't necessarily throw out the fact that you know I'm not trying to sell the fact that we're HBCU. I, you know, this is what we are, and that is a part of the conversation. But I'm not saying you should come to us because we're HBCU. You know, that's not necessarily the argument that I'm making. But a part of the conversation is that we're HBCU and these are the things that we can present. And so then you start bringing in all the positives, the people that we have there, the, the, the most beautiful part. Um, and again, I'm not, I, I feel like I'm trying to sell you. I'm not trying to recruit you. But <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, the, the, the most beautiful part about the University of District of Columbia is the people there. The people there, when you come there, and if you want to succeed at this university, and I didn't know this before I came there, but if you want to succeed at this university, you can do that. They have a pathway, they have people that you, they will help you in that process. And so when, when I'm talking and I'm in uh, someone's living room, someone's kitchen, and I'm talking to a, a recruit and I'm talking to the parents, I can tell them with all certainty that if they come there and do what I asked them to do, at the end of the road, they'll, do, they'll have a degree. And that is so important for them and their growth because of the fact that I come from a neighborhood that whereas when we were growing up, we had guys that we call worm and chicken breast and, and bumshell and hello and you know we had all these nicknames we had a boy named not that passed away early and we didn't even know his name until he went to the funeral and read the the thing his, his name was something his brother's name was eggy bump his name was not brother so you come from these environments that you don't have people talking about a lot of things. You know, survival is the name of the game, more so than going to college. And because a lot of kids that we get, in some cases, are first time college students in their family, you know? And so you, you, you talk about that and you, you, you go in the house and say, well, look, I'm trying to tell you that basketball is fine. And we sell basketball. We want, we want kids that can play basketball. But the educational part, I think, is the most important part of my job and, and that I try to help people get degrees because that's going to stay with them far longer than when that basketball is out. When the air is gone from the basketball and, and there's no opportunity to play anymore, they have to be able to have a piece of paper that they can move on and take care of their families. It doesn't make any sense to go to school for four years and, and wind up being a year and a half behind and have to come back to school. You're not gonna have the opportunity because you gotta work too hard. You're gonna take two class, take another 10 years to finish school. So while you're in school, take this opportunity, make sure you finish school. And, 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 and the opportunity is there for any student that wants to do that. And that's what I think I do and, and what the other coaches try to do to present themselves to uh, these people and try to give them a pathway of, of a, a means to go about to get an education so they can have this and they can they can use this down the road sounds good coach last thing i'll ask you is about your uh recruiting classes for the next couple of years you know we'll, we'll have a lot of kids that'll watch these videos on the network um you know i'll send them out to all of my families because i want them to you know get i always encourage them to learn about the background of the school learn about the coaches that are there 
and create their own dialogue. Um, you know, yes, I can steer you in the right direction, but you know, research is important for kids to do. So what are you looking for in the next 2021, 2022 classes? Uh, you know, do you, or do you have needs there? And, uh, you know, if so, what are they, what are those needs and what type of players, you know, do you just, are you just normally drawn to and would, you know, like to recruit? Well, we lose six players this year and we're in the process of recruiting. We, we recruit heavily up and down the East coast. Um, you know, Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, Washington, DC, uh, you know, Richmond, um, anything in between Delaware. Um, so we try to get out and what we do um, and what I said earlier, jokingly, uh, we try to do research, um, especially if you're getting a high school kid. And I shouldn't say especially, but uh, the reason why I say especially, because if you get a high school kid, there's a lot of things going on with a high school kid. You know, he's never been away from home. He doesn't understand the discipline of, you know, maybe having two classes on this day and thinking, oh, I only have two classes. I don't have anything else to do. So it's a lot that goes on with a high school kid. And you have to make sure that they understand what's going on. But the, the real issue is when you are recruiting someone, you have to be with them for at least one year. You know, something may happen. They may want to go. You may want them not to be around. But you have to be with them. And so you're trying to put together a team. You're not trying to get one person and go one-on-one. -on -one. You're trying to put together a team. So what you're trying to figure out is how is this guy – going to fit in with other people that you already have? You know, is his personality going to be uh, so dominant that you're going to hinder other people on the team? And so what we do, we try to get out and we try to talk to coaches that may know the player. We try to talk to other players that may know him. Um, you, you talk to his parents. You talk to his sister, his brother, uncle. You try to talk administrators teachers, whoever you can talk to to give you some information about a player, uh, read his Twitter account, um, whatever you can do to try to find information on him because you're trying to get him to be successful when he comes here. And the only way that you're going to do that is that you know somebody. I mean, you know something about him. Um, that old, I don't know what it is, but the, the old thing of, you know, one size fit all. It's not true. Whoever thinks that it's not true. You can't just coach everybody the same way because they're not saying they're all different. They're all different personality. Every year I have individual meetings with um, people on the team when I need to have meetings with them and they're all individual. I used to, I always like to call uh, when they asking me a question, there was, there's a me question or a we question. The, the we question is, is, you know, sort of like, uh, Coach, are we gonna, we're going to eat after practice? That's, well, that's a we question. Cause about, right. But if you're saying, Coach, uh, in front of everybody, can I go home this weekend? Well, that's, a, that's, that's, that's not a – you don't ask that question in front of everybody. Right. That may be something I may let you do because there's something going on. Your grandmother right. may be sick. But right. so there are things. So you try to deal with them individually and you try to get kids so we want athletic kids we want kids that like basketball one like we want kids that want to work out but we also want kids that are interested in going to school that have some idea about what it means to be successful uh that can get along with people that understand that somebody's in charge but right now it ain't you you know that, that the, the process is this is what we had a process and so all this experience that I have, Mike Riley has, all his experience, Terrell Stokes or Tony Iotti, the other two coaches, all this experience that we have, we're trying to give you some of it and trying to get you to pick and choose what you want so you can be successful. We're not trying to tell anybody what to do. We're trying to give you information so you're able to use that information. And so when we go out and pick kids, we try to pick pick kids that's going to fit into some of that that we talked about and that, you know, okay, is he willing to listen? Can he be coached? Can he, do, you know, because we get kids all the time. They say, coach, this boy can play. Right. And then I, I say, oh, okay. And then we wind up finding from somebody else. Say, yeah, coach, but I tell you <laughs> what, you're going to lose some sleep. 
you know, right. and, and right. we said, why is that? And then we find out, we said, oh, we're going to stay away from that kid, you know. And so kids lose opportunities a lot of times that they don't know that they lose because, you know, kids sometimes say, well, I want to do it my way or this is not how they used to do it or how my former coach did it. I always say, you know, your former coach is not wrong in what he's doing and I'm not wrong either. We just have different ways of going over the screen. And so you can't come here and say, well, this is the way my other coach says, so this is the way I'm going to go over the screen because that may not fit in with everybody else, you right. know? And so I just think that we try to recoup kids. We want tough kids. We want kids that's not going to back down, but we don't want kids that's going to throw the first punch at somebody or be ignorant and something happened. You know, we always tell them up on campus, no means no. They got to come here and respect people. Um, and they got to do the work. They got to do the work. They don't have to be, you know, the smartest kid. I always say, you know, I know people that graduated cum laude and magnum cum laude. You know, I graduated school. Thank you, laude. But you don't have to you know, find up in the process and put them in. So I just think that the kids that we get, we want to try to help them. I know you're going to use that later on. But, that's okay. but um with the kids that we get, we're trying to help them. And I want them to know that that's what, that's why I'm here at the university. That's why the administrators are here at the university. That's why the professors are here at the university. That's why the president of the university is there. And, 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 you know, uh, Dr. Mason has uh, 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 allowed us to, and put us in position to where we can operate and, and given the, the, um, the athletic director, freedom to be able to do what she can do in order for everybody to be successful. Right. And that's what we're trying to do, to do that. So, Great, Coach. It's been great chatting some basketball with you. Uh, look forward to building a relationship up with you here going forward. And uh, Okay. Yeah, Carlos said he was going to send me send some kids your way. Hey, I'll, I'll I take some kids. I told him you were going to send him stuff yes, on the uh, Coaches Association. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 Coach. Yeah. Uh, when you went to our site, uh, you were really uh, pushing forward our theme. It says Cascade Sports, home of the student athlete. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when, soon, when you go. And we have a segment uh, that is called Bridging the Gap Between Sports and Education. Uh, okay. You hit on some of the primary points that we want to represent. Uh, one of my mentors, Leon Dixon, he's a co-founder of Du Bois Learning Center here. When we started Cascade Sports about 14 years ago, he kept saying to me, uh, Carlos, you got to get off that sports stuff. You got to bring education into the picture. He said, uh, how many people do you know that went to college and became pro athletes? You know, mm. very few. But mm. how many sports people you know got scholarships and went to college and got a degree that took care of them for the rest of their life? Mm -hmm. And that's what mm. you're talking about. Mm. Right. And that's so, exactly right. I mean, could, could we talk about, excuse me cutting you off, but, you know, the kids identify with, a, 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 I guess, a younger group of people, Adrian Dantley or even uh, Kevin Durant, that's from this area that's still playing right now, where everybody is not going to be Kevin Durant, not even close, not even close. So you got to be able to do exactly what you say. I mean, if you're going to be there and you have to be eligible to play for each semester, if you're going to be there and be eligible, that means if you're, if you're eligible, you're progressing toward a degree. Why not go ahead and get the degree since you're here? Why not go ahead? I mean, you know, you don't go to the weird place and get ribs and don't put no barbecue on it. I mean, it, since you're here, go on and do it the right way. And so that's what we're trying to do is make sure the kids understand that they need to go ahead and, and get that piece of paper because that will serve them far longer than chasing, uh, um, you know, an NBA dream. And there's nothing wrong with chasing the NBA dream. Use the basketball to get your education. And that, that's a great way of- Hey coach, of, of, you know Curtis Simon? Curtis Simon. I'm not sure if I do. Right. He, he's 
of uh, out of Wilberforce uh, uh, Central State, where I finally came from, and he, uh, he coaches AAU up there, and he was with ESPN for about 15 years or uh, quite a long time, and he was with uh, BT Sports, and mm -hmm. when they when they uh, so BT, he built a five million dollar gym out in Virginia, mm. uh, and he coaches a lot some of backers. Uh, no, well, he got, he got that buyout, but oh, okay. it, it, it all went sour some kind of way. But he coaches uh, some of the top uh, flight uh, players in 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 the area, and I thought you might know him. No, I don't Love don't him. know him. Don't don't know him. I in your I know, uh, statements, what would you say to athletes and to coaches, and to uh, uh, your your fans? What in the closing statement? What would I say to them? Yes. Well, I I I, I just use myself as an example. I'm very appreciative of the fact that somebody helped me to put together a plan. Um, when I was coming out of, I was in the Navy uh, for three years after high school. And when I came out, I was on my way to Petersburg because that's where my coach was. Um, and then um, uh, I got a call from John Thompson and he wanted me to come to Georgetown. And so I wasn't split. Um, I love my high school coach. I love Virginia State. Um, but I knew two things. I knew Georgetown was Georgetown. Won't go into it. I knew it was Georgetown. And I also knew that it was in Washington, D.C. And that was home. So someone told me that. Someone said that, you know, uh, actually it was, it, it was my mother who said to me, she said, well, you know, honey, and she didn't know, but she said, you know, honey, Georgetown is, is Georgetown. And I said, I understand that, you know, and, and so I wind up. And I just think that you have to have a plan, Carlos. No matter what it is, you got to be headed in the direction of a plan. And you have to talk to people. If, I always tell my kids, if you have something wrong with your car, you go to a mechanic. If you want to learn how to bake a, a cake, you go to a, a baker or to a bakery. You don't go to people that don't know things. You know, a lot of my friends have suggestions about something or so, excuse me, saw something on TV. But if you go to people that know what they're doing, if, if you're trying to save money, you go to a financial advisor and you get information from them. And so you're trying to figure out how to graduate from school. You got to go to people that understand what the process is with that. And, and as I said earlier, the coaches have been through this and they understand that and they know how to do that. And we wind up taking you to other people. You know, I'm going to say this. When I was, my mother put me in to Catholic school when I was in the kindergarten. She didn't have the money to do it, but she understood by putting me in Catholic school with those Oblate Sisters of Providence, the nuns there, that I was going to get a good education. And I was going to be a better person. She didn't know everything she needed to know, know about raising me, but she knew where to place me in order to get that education. And that's what we have to understand. See, that's that whole ignorance that's going on on TV now that you're watching about somebody putting their neck on somebody. It's, and, and this is my opinion, my opinion only, is that the people that are the most dangerous, in my opinion, are the people that stood around and watched that would happen. That guy that did that, he's, he was what he is. And, and every part of society had people that's like him, black, Hispanic, brown, it doesn't matter. Every part of society had people like him. What we don't have is a lot of people that will stand up and say, wait a minute, excuse me. That's not what you should be doing. What you should be doing is something else. And those people is the people that I think have to stand up. And that's what I'm, I'm going into, that's for another topic. Hey, hey, Coach, Coach Glasgow will be getting uh, with you. As I told you, I got another interview. I want to uh, thank you for appearing on the show. And, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, we, look, we look forward to uh, working with you uh, in the very near future. Well, thank you for having me, both of you. I appreciate it. And you're doing a, 
a great thing. I have a friend here named Butch McAdams that uh, uh, runs in and out of sports, and he does uh, something very similar to what you do, but his is live. His is live when he does it, so. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.